There are so many videos and blog posts describing numerous ways on how you can make money coding. While all these options exist, most of these stories lack the ugly truth that 99% of coding site hustles will fail. I've been doing this for 8 years and here are my thoughts on the subject. And don't worry, this is not going to be pessimistic. I have an opinion on how to make these things work and in the end, of course, I'll tell you how you can really make money coding. <laughs> The most popular advice is freelancing. If you think that you're going to finish some bootcamp and change your 9 to 5 life second job into a romantic traveler work whenever you want developer type of job, this ain't gonna happen. Three things worth mentioning here. You need a valid track record of executed projects, a portfolio. Whatever projects you've been doing in your programming classes won't qualify unless you are a really good salesperson. You would be expected to possess many more skills that you would need on a similar staff role because you would be responsible for the whole project rather than some specific part within a team. And then there is dealing with customers. And this can bring so many complications like you wouldn't believe. Bottom line, you'll be expected to do more for less. Finally, finding a freelance job is not easy. Competing with thousands of people on the job boards while struggling with insecurity only to find yourself a one-month project for a few bucks doesn't seem all that compelling to me. The only real path to a freelance income naturally derives from the job you already have. Because being in business proves your qualification, introduces you to the people and the problems they face, develops trustworthy relationships that can grow into a potential partnership. There is not a lot of money in freelance. If you have a family to take care of, this is not the safe option. Create a product and become a billionaire, right? Wrong. Projects, apps, services that people are willing to pay for require cross-domain expertise to develop. If you are a data scientist with a brilliant idea, you'll need vast software engineering skills to bring it to life. If you're a front-end developer, you'll need back-end skills and vice versa. If you're a full stack or possess all the required technical qualifications, you'll need business acumen, a budget or an audience to launch your product into the world. Mobile developers are better equipped to carry out the complete project on their own. But who's gonna want to download your app? Think about the apps you use every day. There really are just a few. Booming days of app discovery are over and nowadays the demand is concentrated around just a few gateways to giant businesses. Product development means you need a team, you need time, budget, and even with all these things in place, statistics says that it will most likely fail for a million other reasons we didn't touch upon. I'm not trying to demotivate you in any way. Quite the opposite. I always encourage people around me to work on their great ideas. It's just I want to address the misconception that any of this stuff is free money. Build a fancy API and charge people for queries. This basically is some code that runs on the cloud and returns information in response to a programmatic request. An example would be an API that provides real-time stock prices or currency rates which developers and businesses may need within their product or service. I personally think that this is a cool idea which is worth investing into, but the success cornerstone here is not coding skills but an idea behind an API. Just about anything you can think of is already present in one form or another online. Where do these ideas come from? Well, when you are working on something and are searching for a solution to a particular problem and can't find it, there is a good chance that there are other people in the world that struggle with the same thing. Don't miss this moment. When you will have created the solution, think it through, do some research. If the demand is real, then package it into an API, host it somewhere in the cloud and spread the word. Top of the line API which transformed into a successful business is Bloomberg Terminal, which sells annual access at $25,000. Consulting. Now this is real and this could be a gradual gateway to a great personal business, but this is for seasoned professionals only, well connected with years of experience and highly developed soft skills. Let me give you an example on how this usually happens. You are working as a senior software developer or a tech lead in a well-established company or a team. You interact with some customer on a joint project. You demonstrate great expertise and leadership. Sometime later, one of your counterparts or a former colleague who switched tracks comes back to you personally for an advice or with a proposal to work on some new project. A good bet would be developing unique skills in some niche tech that would be hard to find elsewhere. I know quite a few great professionals who are getting extra cash for their exceptional knowledge while being employed full-time. Game Dev This usually comes to mind to young fellas fresh out of school. While there are enormous amounts of money in the industry, this by no means is easy. 
Game dev is a big business. Let's not even discuss the possibility to make your own desktop game, but even if you come up with a half-decent mobile game on your own, good luck promoting it on the App Store. A friend of mine works in a mobile game development company, and they spend on average $1 million per month running Facebook apps promoting their single game. Unless you create a truly amazing game and attract venture capital, no one will ever see it. Sharing your skills for money. This is a good idea, if done right. Uh, while there are many different options, I want to address the ones with the highest potential. Launching your own course at a well-known platform. Yes, this takes a lot of time to develop, but the good news is that this business prospect and an action plan are really transparent. You can create the curriculum, lectures, uh, study and video materials all by yourself at your own pace. Success here depends on the three things, and I always have three things. Expertise in the subject you are trying to teach. Good storytelling skills, you must try to make it engaging or at least not boring. And an audience, and this one thing is outside of your control unless you have an online following. But when you have it done and manage to bring it to the attention of some audience, this is a good steady passive income source which has a potential to go viral and make a lot of money. Other forms of teaching like personal tutoring or any other form of trading your time for money do not scale and are not worth the effort. Content creation around coding, that is blogging, making a YouTube channel about coding, uh, email newsletter and the like. Well, this is a whole separate league. If you want to make a living through these channels, you will have to give up coding eventually, because in order to generate a noticeable income, this has to become a full-time activity. And if you're not coding while busy developing your online presence, then what are you going to talk about? Don't get me wrong, social presence for programmers, to a certain extent, is important and necessary, not to mention that sharing knowledge is just a notable cause. But as a primary income stream, you will have to make a choice, programming or content creation, because you will not have time for both. Competitions or hackathons. I would not even consider this as a steady income source, because if you do, you would have to convince yourself that you are better than everybody else. Healthy ambitions are good, but this is something else. Winning a programming competition is a perfect objective validation of your qualification, and this will look great on your resume. And if it comes with a price, well then buy yourself a dev box with 4 GPUs to train your neural nets faster. This may be a one-time thing because the world is full of talented people and there will always be severe competition, no matter how brilliant you are. I would invest time into this only to learn and to obtain independent proof of my skills. That's it. There are many more coding side hustles floating around and I've just touched on a few most obvious ones. So how exactly can you monetize your coding skills? I hope it became obvious through my monologue. Get a full-time job. And if you already have one, just reflect on it for a second. You are already a part of the highest paying, fastest growing industry. You are basically holding a golden ticket. Work it like there is no tomorrow and inevitably one of the two things will happen. Or maybe both. You will progress in your career to the point where you don't even have to think about side hustles. Luckily, in this field, people can get paid in the six-figure top range more frequently than in any other industry, well, maybe except for medicine and law. You will develop enough prerequisites to monetize your brilliant idea through any of the mentioned means. If you're not a well-established professional, don't waste time on side hustles. Focus on exceptional performance at your full-time job and the rest will follow. Turn